What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Shields of Loyalty. Uh, this is kind of like, I don't know if you've ever played Fantasy General, it's kind of like that. This is an army building game set in a fantasy world where you put together an army and you take on a series of objectives and fights and sorties and skirmishes and sieges and things of that nature with the units that you carry across in the hopes that you can stop an undead lich from kind of waving across the land. I've spent about an hour, hour and a half with the game. I think it's kind of interesting. There's definitely some foibles in here and there's definitely some things that I think could be cleaned up a little bit. But I figured since the game's been in early access for a while and just has a wonderful art style, which I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of a sucker for nice art styles. Uh, but anyway, since the game actually has the appearance stuff all taken care of and the mechanical things are all coming together, we're going to check it out today with a 25-30 minute video and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this video you wanted to get the game for yourself, i got a link for you down below in the description. And then on top of that, you'll also be able to find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream where I frequently play these games live on the day that the video goes up so that you can get like a four hour deeper look. If you can't make it to the time scheduling, that's perfectly fine. The VODs are up for like 90 days and so you can check it out there. Let's go ahead and start off a new campaign and see if we can't be the most wondrous Aragorn style fantasy general that we can possibly be. Um, I don't think I need the tutorial information. I think I'm okay. Island world of Monteria new magic. But no one had seen such a dark kind of it in generations. Not even at the time when Lord Desmond tried to overthrow King Eldrick II. Until he was killed in a final major battle. Reports of hordes of the undead and demons that attacked and devastated cities across the kingdom were now spreading as quickly as the last survivors could ride. The last hope were the noblemen, warlords, and magicians whom King Eldrick II had exiled when peace returned to Monteria. But the heroes of past wars went into exile and lived in seclusion. Few knew their whereabouts. The royal reporting officers had already been sent in all directions and were to take up the trail to the heroes. In the bag, a letter of the king which reveals an urgent cry for help and a promise of fame and glory. be honest with you I'm not super sure that the choice of voice actor there like they've got kind of like a Dragon Ball Z coming next week type deal going on right there and I can't help but wonder if maybe swapping that voice out for like something a little bit more immersive and kind of identifiable as a fantasy character uh, a little bit more grim of a reading I think actually would have made that cinematic go over a little bit better but anyways we're playing as Nobleman Aglavan uh, Nobleman Aglavan, he's got uh, what looks like 1600 melee attack, 2000 health. There's a number of stats for all of these units right here, and you can actually go through all of them. The number on the left is how many you have in that formation, or in that squad, or in that platoon. Uh, so we've got mounted scouts, we've got armored riders, we've got like some bowmen, we've got a couple of guys with dogs. Basically, we've got a very, very light expeditionary force right now. Really, the only thing that we have that's backing up this advance are the two units of heavy cavalry, really. Uh, he does have an aura, so basically if cavalry gets attacked inside of like one range of him, they get a defensive bonus, and then the ranged fighters that are inside of one range of him also get extra movement points if they decide to move. And so anyways, things to keep an eye on, things to be aware of. There is little blurbs of text over here that you can take a look at just in case you wanted to sink a little bit deeper on into the game. I haven't really paid attention to the storyline too much. I did the first couple missions. And honestly, I, I didn't pay attention to the story at all. I was mostly just like, yeah, dude, where are the skeletons at? Let's bash them. Let's play. All right, so this is the world map. You're going to interact with everything from here. A lot of the mechanics have not been implemented on this map yet in the early access. The game has been in early access for a while, though I can't tell you exactly how long. Apparently, they've been populating these outer islands first and getting all the missions in before they get all the management stuff in. And so anyways... 
I'm not like a huge guy when it comes to just playing campaign missions like in string. I tend to prefer that there be some kind of like city building or castle building or some kind of thing going on on the in-between in-between missions. Uh, but unfortunately, that doesn't appear to exist outside of the ability to research your units and make them stronger. And according to the developers on the forums, even kind of this is like a placeholder. So you'll see like with our light infantry, they turn into druids if we upgrade them one level. And they turn into like wizards if you upgrade them another level. Kind of a weird thing. And people have noticed that like they were expecting that the light cavalry would just become better light cavalry that look cooler and have like better gear and whatnot uh, that's apparently going to be split up later on there's going to be a magic tree and so all the stuff that converts into magical units for right now is going to be in the magic tree and then these guys are going to have like their own sort of trail from the last thing i read from the developers but this is the research menu inside the research menu you can spend your gold in order to upgrade units and make them better uh, so, like, in the case of Heavy Cavalry, we could upgrade them to Lance Carriers at the moment, and that would raise their attack by 70. They would get a bunch more armor. They would get a bunch more HP per unit. Uh, if you go with the ranged units down here, you could convert them into Crossbowmen, which very much kind of does the same thing linearly. I would recommend that if they're planning on keeping this troop tree right here, instead of, like, having the... So, you can, you can have them evolve into new units once they get a couple of patches out, but I would also recommend that they have like little bubbles in between that that allow you to kind of customize the units for replayability. So like you could go all attack on them, but then they're really, really squishy. You could go all HP on them. So if they're kind of like siege ranged guys, like stuff like that, I think that allows you to customize your characters a little bit more would be a really, really good idea for sort of keeping the game fresh and replayable. Because as of right now, there's no sandbox mode. There's no like skirmish mode or anything. There's pretty much only the campaign. And so they're going to want to think about long-term replayability with titles like this as well, since that's ultimately the thing that really kept people coming back to, like, Heroes of Might and Magic and Fantasy General and things of that nature. For right now, I don't know what I want to set up with regards to my upgrades. I would say that it's probably a good idea to either... Ooh, my God, it's so expensive to make my heavy infantry better. Okay, we can make our light cavalry better, and they can ride on some kind of, like, World of Warcraft-looking velociraptors. I can't really see through the shade right there, but it appears obvious to me that they're riding on some kind of lizard. Uh, we can also upgrade our scouts into kind of like assassins. We can make our... I think the ranged into crossbowmen isn't a bad idea. But let's take a look around first. We can go to our army management, and we can actually level up our army and get a few more units to kind of pack in here. I would suggest we probably go with heavy infantry. They've got 60 HP and they've got 50 attack by comparison to the light cavalry or the light infantry's. What does light infantry have? Yeah, they're a little bit more sturdy than the light infantry when it comes to just about all of their attributes. I think at the cost of not being quite as mobile. Yeah, they lose a movement in there. But this force right here, very expeditionary. Like we don't have a lot of stuff that can actually take the brunt and the fire of combat in this build right now. We could get the mounted scouts out of here, but I think we're probably going to need them. I'll probably disband these guys and disband these guys right here, and we'll just use the armor. Or we'll use the mounted scouts. Uh, so we'll get another, yeah, we'll get another group of mounted scouts. That sounds good. We'll replace that. I would like to have, so how many units of heavy cavalry do I have? Just two units of heavy cavalry? We can fill in three more. I think we're going to need another batch of ranged units. That sounds good. I think that sounds acceptable. I don't want to lean too heavy on light infantry. So I'll probably go too heavy infantry right here. Just to give something for the heavy cavalry to wheel around. Like we need a linchpin that can hold so that we can turn flanks with the heavy cavalry and sort of skirmish with the light cavalry. And so I think that build right there is something that plays to kind of my strengths personally as a tactician, if you can even call me that. I'm kind of terrible at this stuff. I'm not good at this game, by the way. I'm going to lose units in here. You, can, you guys need to accept that, like, some of these some of these units aren't making it home to, like, the, the bagpipes and the flags and stuff. They're not, they're not making it. Uh, we've got the path to Riftane. Let's dive on in. If we want to reach Riftane before the undead tear down the walls of this proud city, there's no time to lose. Our haste, however, has yet another reason. Too many moons have passed since King Eldrick II dismissed us from serving in his army, as seemingly there was no battles to fight anymore. Now is the time to prove to the king that we are still combat ready. Our objective is to defeat all the undead on our way to Riftane, and our main character must survive. Let's go. 
So here's our deployment phase. We can start dropping some units around. We don't have a lot of line of sight right now, but I'd like to get a basic cursory sort of formation put together. Uh, basically, we'll put the heavies in right alongside our commander. I'd like the mounted scouts to be mounted and scouting. That's pretty much where I'd like to start from. We want to keep our archers isolated if we can. How did you get there? Go away. You don't go there. Uh, we'll put the heavy cav kind of like in reserve, I guess. There we go. That works out. We've still got this little batch of infantry right here. I've become, like, from testing the game out, I've become terrified of trusting this light infantry to accomplish anything. I treat them like they're militia, basically. I have no faith in them, and they merely exist to die so that other more expensive units do not die. Uh, the way up to here was too easy and harmless. The enemy may be right in front of us. Be careful and look out for an ambush. Okay, scouts, let's get them moving. We're going to move our scouts up very carefully. Uh, basically using leapfrogging tactics and then we're going once we know that we're clear we're going to move the army up uh, these forests right here every tile in this game has effects uh, so basically if it's like a flat area movement cost is like much much easier or you use less ap to move around but if you have forests and things around it's going to take you a little bit longer to group up uh, we're going to go ahead and have them move up to there we're going to keep our archers isolated at all times Heavy cavalry, I think, can move up on the right because they're pretty sturdy. And we'll just kind of scout out a column going north right here. You guys, I don't know. I don't know what I want my light infantry to do. Uh, each of these units does have abilities that you can take a look at. You can replenish them on the field of battle. Uh, you can make them get healed. You can do all kinds of stuff. Basically, you can dismiss the units. You can do all kinds of things. You can pull them back into reserves. We'll take a look once we're actually like in combat and have wounded units so that you can have an idea of the full range of things that you can do. On the UI, we've got our cash up here. The reason that that's relevant inside the context of a battle is because that healing and restoring your units and replenishing them costs money. And so anyways, it's a good idea to do that. Whenever they score like kills, they get like little gems that level them up and make them stronger. Their stats will grow up and become better. Uh, our abilities obviously lifted down here. How many people are remaining? Like how many of our total units are left remaining? All that kind of information. There's no time limits on these battles, and I do recommend that you play very cautiously. Uh, if you don't play cautiously, bad things are going to happen. I, I promise. Uh, don't don't stumble around too aggressively with your units. Try to clear the fog of war carefully. Basically, try to keep your archers isolated. Try to keep them kind of like jammed in and taken care of. We'll go ahead and have them be up front. That's fine. I'm not in love with this formation, but then again, we're kind of contending with these trees over here, which are getting in the way of us holding a formation. I'd like to get us back into an echelon, but we'll have a turn to do that once we reveal the enemy. I'm going to have these guys leapfrog a little bit. We still haven't seen anything, so that's good. Let's go ahead and have him move up. He's going to be the linchpin. Go ahead and have the cavalry kind of in reserve holding a flank. We'll have that heavy infantry right there. You guys kind of step on in, and I think we're good for right now. The enemy hasn't made any big pushes or anything right now, which is great. Uh, scouts. Okay, that's fine. Uh, they may get hit, but they'll, they'll be okay. It seems the earth spat them out. Let's get them back under. I love the little portraits and whatnot for the units. They look really, really cool when they're speaking. All right, so now we want to form up. Let's do that. Uh, so in formation, it's going to take us a minute or two to really get people where I want them to go. Probably a turn or two, in all honesty. That formation is fine. I'd like to get that cavalry back and then fill it in with this infantry right here. Our left flank's going to be a little bit weak, but we just need something to hold because this game kind of has combos. Like, it's hard to describe, but basically... We want him to be flanked by heavy cavalry, so we'll probably sidestep these guys a little bit or move them up by one. We want our leader to be flanked by heavy cavalry for the defensive bonuses, and then on top of that, we want our archers to be adjacent, because when our units in front of them attack, they will supplement with suppressive fire, and if they get attacked, they will also give suppressive fire just automatically. You have no control over that except for your positioning, and so we want to be mindful of what we can do with our units here. We'll see if the enemy sallies out. Uh, they did indeed sally out. And in fact, they got to my cavalry right there. They didn't kill anybody, though, so that's good. There are no zones of control in this game, so don't worry about moving your units in and out of combat. Um, I, I, I'm sort of two minds about that. I usually prefer games that have zones of control. Uh, it becomes very, very difficult to defend your range guys in games that don't have zones of control. 
But at the same time, this does allow you to freewheel around a little bit more. Let's go ahead and have them move into this gap right here and engage. So we've dealt 357 damage and we've killed nine of them. Well, we've inflicted nine casualties. Uh, so they have a number of deaths. You can see that listed over on the right right here when you mouse over them. I think the dark red is the units that were killed and the light red are the ones that are wounded. You can basically see a synopsis of each unit's individual health there. We will want to bring this together and I think finish them right here. I would like to put some fire on that necromancer. He can resurrect enemies and heal them. The enemy had no chance against the force of our weapons. I'm going to go ahead and move my archers up. I don't want to overcommit my heavy cavalry just yet. But we could do a charge right here. And they would have adjacency for the defensive bonus. Let's do it. So this is a nice strike. Actually wiped out their entire line in one go. They're going to take retaliatory attacks from this guy right here. But hopefully they'll persevere and be all right. Even if they didn't make it easy for us, we have triumphed. Okay. Uh, we're going to want to keep... Which of these scouts is wounded right here? You're wounded. Okay. We'll probably want them to replenish in between engagements. I'm going to be really ginger about this cavalry and just kind of move them up softly. He did indeed do... Oh, he did an attack, interestingly enough. I can capitalize on that. Okay, so heavy cavalry. I want you right there. I want you right there. You attack. That's going to be eight of them killed right there. Very, very nice. He's still got 1,600 HP left, so it'll be fine. We'll go ahead and charge him with that cavalry, and that should wipe out the rest of the unit. And down they go. Our wounds will long remind us of this battle as scars. Okay. What we're going to want to do now is... These guys are a little bit wounded. We can't replenish them just yet. They do have special abilities, so heavy infantry damage... The next attack deals 1.5 damage if an infantry unit is attacked. Okay. I was hoping I could heal off some of their HP right there, but what we're going to want to do is let's bring the scouts up and see if we can get a better view of this area. Your scouts in this game, they tend to suffer from a thing. Um, the, the, the scouts tend to get chewed on. They don't have very good line of sight, and so it's usually pretty easy to overcommit your scouts in this game and get into trouble where your scouts just get blobbed and obliterated. Uh, that's why I'm moving so carefully right now. People might be wondering, like, why are you only moving, like, two hexes at a time? Uh, because it's very easy to overcommit. It's incredibly easy. Remember, they will take no prisoners, so neither shall we. Okay, we're going to want to get the commander up in here and get this guy. You'll never penetrate our defenses. You call that a defense? Don't make me laugh. Attack! 14 casualties right there. Very nice. So this guy has effectively been annihilated. We can capture these points right here. Every single village and tower and ruin and thing that you capture usually has some kind of event attached to it that usually just ends up in you getting money from what I've seen. Don't let up now. We've almost defeated them. We are going to want to bring the heavy cav up to finish them off just so that they don't take a shot at this already weakened unit right here. And there you go. We've won our first victory. Let's go ahead and move the scouts up. They're going to be responsible for grabbing that territory. We're going to want to move the infantry and the archers up as well. Keep the heavy cav with the archers over here. We're a little bit scattered, but I'll reform in just a minute. We've just won a victory, and there shouldn't be... The enemy, I don't think, pushes you in this first level. In the later levels, the enemy actually makes tactical decisions. Like, if you're attacking a point, they'll try to flank you. They'll try to come in from the side. They'll send a couple units just to harass and skirmish. Things of that nature. Now, this right here is a ruin. Let's go ahead and capture it. The ghost grave has been conquered. Only the daring may enter to get loot. Did you hear that rustling in the corner? Was it a rat? Well, there's gold in here, and it will benefit our war chest. We got 48, uh, 48 gold. Very nice. It's about a third of a new unit, and we're definitely going to want to have new units before too long. Let's draw everybody back into formation. Get them scouts out there, just clearing out some of that fog. Keep the archers in the back. And we're going to follow the roads to the east, I think. Oh, the forces of nature are unloading on Montaria. Beautiful. Lightning, apparently somebody forgot to say their prayers and got struck by lightning. I don't know how I feel about the lightning effect. It's, I don't think it's random. 
I've played for about an hour and a half. It seems like the lightning, given the number of hexes that exist, my units seem to get hit by lightning a lot more than one might expect. Uh, for 13 gold, we can restore this unit. They will lose some XP, though. Let's just form up. Hopefully the loss of one unit is not going to be that detrimental. Go ahead and have them wide, I guess. Scouts continue giving me a little bit of view line here. Where's my other scout unit at? Oh, he's down there. I thought I was moving my heavies, but I was moving my scouts. Beautiful. All right. Well, let's get everybody lined up. He's stuck in the forest, so we may need an extra turn here just to get ourselves into a good formation. Heavy cavalry to a flank. Uh, we probably want the heavy cavalry. Ah, oh, Christ. Okay, so here's where things are going to get chaotic, and we're going to lose a cavalryman. I think there's probably very little way around that. Let's at least get him up here for the defensive bonus. We'll pull the infantry up. We'll pull the scout cavalry up. Archers are way out of position. We are in bad shape here. I wasn't expecting to trigger another group right there. Yeah, we're going to take some losses here. Oh, really? They didn't do anything. Intradasting. All right, well, pull everybody in, I guess. I mean, if they're going to give us a turn, let's take that turn and optimize on it. Yep, get everybody into combat that we possibly can. How beat up are you guys? You guys are fresh. Okay. Heavy cavalry, attack the spearmen. There's the defensive fire right there. A lot of HP damage. I probably should have gone for the archers first. Let's go ahead and see if we can pick them apart real fast. Eight casualties inflicted on that side. Seven casualties inflicted. They are now officially deader than the dirt. One more prayer for the fallen, and then we must move on already. Light cavalry, strike a blow at them. One thing I have noticed is that the enemy doesn't seem to get to retaliate if your blow finishes them off. And so it's usually a good idea to kind of hit them first with something strong and then finish, th finish them off with something else that, like, whose turn is not quite as important. Uh, you guys stay in behind the scouts real fast since you're wounded. Let's go ahead and bring the light infantry down over here. I'll at least get him into position, maybe for some kind of defensive fire. Let's see what their infantry decides to do on this turn. My guess is they're going to target the cavalry. Yeah. Three casualties inflicted on us. Not great. Would have preferred for it to go differently, but that's life. Go ahead and charge with our commander. Offensive fire has supplemented the attack, leading to 12 casualties being inflicted. Our hero lost 300 HP. They are now falling back. We've knocked them out of their position. We're going to go ahead and swing on in, and we're going to finish them off with light cavalry for an infantry route. That's normally what you're playing with. Typically, you've got, like, shock infantry at the center. You've got, you know, militia leading in front of that just to stub it. Skirmishers out in the front of that. And then you kind of use light cavalry to chase down the people that are routing, heavy cavalry to break shock troopers, things of that nature. So, all right. We're going to need to reform, but we did capture a city, so that's good. At least we've taken some stuff. An important thing to be aware of, if a unit is fully depleted in this game, they die. They're gone forever. And so it's not a bad idea for you to pull units back that are just catastrophically depleted. They get automatically replenished in the next battle. Uh, or you can replenish them on the field for some gold. But I will say that the economy in this game can be a little bit tight, so... You're going to want to limit how much you combat replenish your units if you want to make a long haul of it. Uh, building this house on rock could not save it. A laid table. What happened to the people that ate here? After a long search, we find noble metals. We found 48 more gold. Okay, looks good. I'd like to get this back up to 5,000. Uh, they increase your unit cap pretty soon after this battle. And so you need to buy a bunch of units if you want to compete on any real level with the enemy. We can heal them. They'll only lose one HP. We can heal unit members. Let's go ahead and do that first. Uh, that's got them replenished back up, and I think that form of replenishment is free, actually. I don't think that costs you anything. And does anybody else need to replenish? No, nah, we're okay. I mean, they only had one death, so that's good. We can kind of keep them in the fight from here on out. Let's go ahead and maneuver a bit. Heavy infantry up that way. Heavy infantry come up and meet right there. 
We'll go ahead and have the heavy cav sort of flanking. Didn't I have two heavy calves? Where's my other heavy cav? Oh my god. Oh my, okay, let's just bypass some turns. I'm gonna get everybody into formation. So after a turn or two, I've managed to get everybody exactly where I want them to be. I need my scouts to start taking, okay, so now we know where the enemy's at. We can actually form up around that. You guys defend this little pass right here, since you're light cavalry anyways. Uh, let's go ahead and start putting together a formation. Looks acceptable. I think I can live with it. Yeah, it seems alright. We'll see if they dogpile this poor bastard right here. He's going to take a lot of casualties on his next attack. And so... This tends to happen. Oh my, hello. Hi, who are you? Oh, seven casualties to my infantry. Okay, beautiful. Alright, heavy cav. Get a Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, not great. Could be better. Uh, we're going to have to dogpile a little bit here just to make this work. Uh, if I can get the hero up here to do just about anything, that'll be good. I keep getting caught out of position while I'm trying to wheel on other people. Yeah, get them up there. Go ahead and have them. How many wounds does he have? Yeah, go ahead and replenish. Stay on your feet. Bypass your turn. Let's go ahead and get the light cav up here too. This is going to be a big fight. Bad things are going to happen. Go ahead and get the heavy cav up here. Get the light cav up here. Light infantry. I can sacrifice the light infantry to strike a blow at their necromancer to stop him from rezzing. Or we can focus fire real aggressively and get these archers. I'm going to go after the archers, I think. So we got four casualties right there, and we've got 11 casualties right there. Beautiful. Even if they did not make it easy for us, we have triumphed. Next turn is when we're going to have to work our magic here, but we're going to take a bit of a scuffing first. Okay, so Spearmen in on Heavy Cav. Uh, they took four casualties. That's fine. They're falling back. They're falling back. They're holding position? No, they're moving in to strike at my cavalry again. Oh, they wiped out the entire unit. Good God. Okay, that was an expensive, uh, that's an expensive problem. I do think that line of sight needs to be greatly expanded in this game. You just stumble into enemies too much. Like, it's really, really hard to scout effectively in this game without basically sacrificing your scouts. Like, either that or it's like you do one turn, move one cell. Do one turn, move one cell. Do one turn, move one cell. Like, that's really the only safe way to play the game, and I found that it's kind of tedious. Can you guys fire from here? Alright, you guys move in and go after the spears, I guess. So there's 11 casualties right there. They've killed off the spear boys. You guys go ahead and catch a flank right here. You guys move up to here. Go ahead and give me a charge. Offensive, Offensive fire. fire is going to get added to that due to adjacency. And five casualties for 13 kills. I'll take it. He's falling back, but I'm not going to let him get away. I'm going to go ahead and finish him off with my... Let's finish him off with the heavy infantry. I don't like that I lost a unit. I dislike that very much. You guys have a lot of wounds. Maybe flank up to the north. You guys are pretty beat up too. All my units have taken some damage. Definitely some attrition happening here. I'm trying to adapt to situations the best I can, but... Okay, first lightning mist. Second lightning mist. We're okay. All right, good, dude. I hate it when my units get struck by lightning. It annoys the hell out of me. All right, so over here. Commander, get on in there. We're going to go ahead and because of the river crossing, that's going to kind of mess with our ability to reinforce the commander. It's okay. I think he should be able to survive a turn, especially if he blunts one of these guys right here. He got 12 casualties out. And he forced a pushback, which actually may work to our benefit because now Light Cav can get up in here and finish him off before the Necromancer heals him. Keep the Heavy Cav kind of in reserve for a minute. Heavy Infantry form up behind the Commander. Light Infantry over there. Guessing the arrows are going to go to the Light Infantry. That's my expectation anyways. The one kind of asterisk next to this engagement is that my archers are too far away to really help with anything. 
Wiped out the entire formation. I do think that infantry is entirely too strong against cavalry. This game doesn't seem to have like a rock, paper, scissors matchup for whatever reason. And I can't explain why. Like when I first started playing, I was like, okay, so the spear guys are going to be strong against my cavalry. The melee guys are going to kind of like suck against my cavalry. And like that is actually not the way the game works once you're actually in combat. All right, we want the light infantry over here. Go ahead and harass them. Actually kind of went poorly for our light infantry. That'll work. Uh, let's have the Lord Commander. Ah, Lord Commander's getting kind of scuffed. Never mind, we'll have the heavy infantry do it. Three to one casualties. Okay. Light cav. Get in here on them. Two wounds. Okay. Ah, nine casualties right there. Much better. And then you can move around to the other side. Lord Commander, get some love and touch and squeezing off right there. Finish off that regiment. And we have no shot that we can take right there, but the enemy is pretty beat up, so I think we'll be okay. Like, they've largely been kind of rendered combat irrelevant. We're going to have to keep the commander out of the next fight, though. I think it's kind of a big risk. Uh, Necromancer replenish their numbers. A little bit unfortunate, but it's fine. We'll move in to here, and then we'll attack right there. We got Narholm. So the resistance of the undead was strong, but our attack was stronger. From the bottom of the wishing well and center of town, we were allowed to get 53 gold. That's... Okay. Oh, we got a free unit, too. Okay. That helps a tiny bit. That makes the pain go away. Anybody that needs to replenish, by all means, take your turn. Replenish. Get your numbers back up. Get your HP back up. You go ahead and fire at him. That should be enough to knock him down. Yeah, good. Okay, so we're just going to take a turn to rest and breathe here for a minute. So that I can get an idea of where we're at. Everybody seems to be okay. Let's go ahead and bypass the turn. Hopefully we don't get pushed from the south because we know that there's another formation or column of enemies down here. Let's go ahead and get all the cavalry together. I really don't like that I lost one of my heavy cavalry units to an infantry charge. That bothers me. And lightning is going to goad us along. First one missed. Looks good. Second one hit my infantry. I think it's like a weighted random, dude. I've never seen the lightning hit the enemy. I've only seen it hit me, and it seems to hit me every three to five turns. Like, I think it's to stop you from just, like, turtling, but I don't know. Let's get everybody into formation here so that we've got, like, a coherent line. We'll put the scouts kind of out around the flanks to just bait an attack on them since they were free. We'll get the archers back to a good spot, and that looks fine to me. Let's see what this little zombie guy does right here. He's actually moving out to the flank, interestingly enough. Um, run him down. So it actually looks like light cavalry gets the best result right there. So let's do that. Okay, nice. I'll take it. Uh, scouts, if you want to get in there, by all means, get on in there. Attack them with the battle doggies. Battle doggies were victorious. We've got nine kills right here if we push them, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And then we're just going to have this column right here secure his flank so that he doesn't get wheeled around. That looks good. He probably won't... Oh, he did abandon his battlements. Okay. I was going to say, he's probably not going to abandon his defenses, but he did. Fair enough. That just shows what I know about combat. Go ahead and wipe him out real fast. That's the last one, and I think that should be victory. Yeah, there it is right there. I really think, so like, I like the game. I think it's a pretty cool little tactical game, even though I don't normally play games like this. Uh, but the voiceover, I think, is the biggest foible right there. They gotta find something that's a little bit more on theme with the grim, dark, end of the world type thing that they've got going on. Some with a little bit more rasp to it. Like, when you do, like, defensive fire, the defensive fire like voice I don't know it comes across cheesy to me it reads cre it reads kind of cheesy and out of place it's not that the voice acting is bad it's just that it's out of place 
Like, I feel like having something that's a little bit more on theme, like someone that sounds like a soldier basically being like, uh, hold them back from our lines! Like, something like that right there. When the defensive fire goes back on, like, that would be better. Or, like, when shield wall activates, instead of just having, like, shield wall. Like, having someone be like, shields up! You know, something like that. Like, you know, and then you hear, like, the clanking of shields all going up. Like, I feel like that would be a little bit more immersive. Like, I think the game loses a little bit of an immersive trapping every single time that weird game show announcer guy <laughs> decides to, like pop on in like that voice acting would be fine for a game where you're doing something like running man or something where it's like a you know a deadly tv show or something of that nature or like a moba but for a game like this i think having a voice act uh, a voice acting thing going on that's a little bit more on theme and on atmosphere would go a long way uh, we have won the battle this is shields of loyalty there are lots of missions for you to play through as far as i can tell i've made it through the first couple um, I do think the game is pretty cool, even though I'm not really a strategy guy. Like, I really like the art style, I really like the portraits and the way the units move. I do think that they could have a little, like, instead of them just moving up and banging into the other unit, like, you know, the units actually lowering their lances or, like, swinging their swords as they ride into the tile would be better. But, you know, sometimes games are low budget. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Shields of Loyalty. Tomorrow we will have something else. Don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you all next time. Take care, everybody.